Hello everyone, uh, my name is Salah Sakari. I'm a professor of robotics at the University of Sydney. I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for this invitation and it's a great honor to be here uh, as part of this uh, uh, workshop. Uh, my focus is on uh, robotic systems, uh, ground robotic systems, and over the last 20 years I've worked in mining and aviation, uh, aerospace, uh, also in agriculture, and there's been a bit of work in space uh, robotics research. Uh, Australia hasn't had a space agency uh, ever up until very recently, and so any space research, research work that we've done has been internal. So I'm going to touch a little bit on that, but then focus on a particular area around ag robotics. Uh, because a lot of the things that we learned in the space robotics research worked into ag robotics and now we're starting to go back into some space robotics research from what we've learned in ag robotics. So I'm hoping that overall that will give us a, a good idea of the kind of work that we have been uh, doing. Uh, some of our previous work uh, has focused a lot on um, uh, the uh, uh, looking at different types of robotic tools and robotic systems and how we might design them and, and, and deal with them in different ways. Um, as well as autonomous navigation and um, um, uh, looking at intelligence on those platforms. The first robot is really that wheeled legged kind of robotic uh, system. We focused a lot on path planning, um, real time kinetic planning and being able to have a robot move around and maintain stability uh, while it's moving around and being able to make decisions about uh, what leg to move, which wheel to move, what speeds, how to rotate, etc. And the second robot was focusing on looking at scientific inference. So um, how do you, would you do co-learning between a, uh, say a, a geologist, for example, and the robot and how would they share information? So there's a fair bit of uh, work in, the, in those two spaces. This is just examples of um, some work. Uh, Will Reed, who's currently at NASA, um, did his PhD with us, um, uh, focusing on various elements of uh, planning uh, using that particular robot, and we called it Mammoth, um, and, and being able to look at how you might um, designate plans, different types of plans, and what plan would be the most stable plan, stable in terms of the platform um, stability, so being able to, so not you know, having it tip over in any form. Uh, Akash Arura, who's in the States at the moment now, did his PhD on that scientific inference element that we, um, uh, that I mentioned before. So uh, in this particular case, looking at different types of classes of rocks, um, and how you might use different uh, information sources uh, and, and then how does that relate back to um, the, the scientific mission. So using Bayesian inference methods um, to uh, fuse information between the scientists and the robot solution, uh, robot, and being able to uh, um, have that as part of a mission plan. Some of the latest work that we did was on, on all-terrain robotics, and this is with Nathan Wallace, who just recently finished his PhD. And he was looking at an all-terrain robot and what it meant to develop energy efficient paths based on the contour um, of the terrain uh, before you. So, um, and, and, and defining missions within that. So if you had to do a coverage mission, or if you had to do a search mission, um, or, or a collection mission and you had no go zones and you had boundaries, uh, what would be the most effect, efficient path to follow given the contour, given how much energy you have and how much energy you want by the end of it all. So as you can see, all the robots were electric. Um, a lot of the focuses was on developing the robot solution in its different um, types of uh, configurations um, and then in placing the environment and understanding different, whether it was stability and path planning or whether it was energy efficient path planning or whether it was part of a scientific mission. So that, that that was kind of that's a, a just a very high level touch on some of the on the robotics work that we did within the space research activity in my lab. Um, as I mentioned before, we we didn't have a a space agency, so a lot of the work um, in order to kind of push it out into uh, the real world uh, focused on agriculture. So I'm going to touch on some agriculture work to really show how the intelligence and the robotics has come together, and then kind of wrap around to to talk a little bit about the the space research work uh, that we're looking at. Uh, the reason why we looked at ag was was very similar to what you might find um, um, in in space applications. Um, this is a this is a uh, a postcard from two thousand uh, sorry from nineteen hundred, which was um, looking at what the future of farming might look like. This is a postcard from France, um, and uh, it's got that classic view. And agriculture has always been a difficult uh, field to work in, but the the fundamental premises are that. Um, uh, it's an all-terrain environment in various forms. So sometimes it can be flat, but it can be muddy, rocky. Uh, you've got to, uh, you want to build autonomy, but you're out in the middle of nowhere. 
um, you don't necessarily have communication, so you want any type of intelligence to be acting in real time in some form. And there's collaboration with some sort of external operator, in this case, the farmer who has other motives, uh, business motives in this particular case, not necessarily scientific motives that we might have in the space program and how this all might come together. So I'm just gonna talk about some of the, the, the activity. Um, first one I'm gonna look at is tree crop intelligence. And really what I wanted to do was to kind of articulate how we approach the problem to see where robotics came in and to lead to that ultimate goal about the, the future scientific mission element. If you ask the farmer um, in the tree crop industry what they, you know, what the process is, how they go through, they, there's lots of decision points. And again, you know, we, when you're looking at a space mission, it's the same process that you might be looking through in terms of building. The difference in agriculture is that you're dealing with biological entities that grow and change. It's a function of time, um, um, exist one day, don't exist another day, depending on the weather, et cetera. So there's lots of decision points that a farmer needs to go through. And, and you could map that out as a process, but what we wanted to do from a robotics angle is map out the information process. So if you looked at this as a cycle uh, from, from pre-pruning all the way through to packing, going clockwise, you can actually start to, um, oops, sorry. You can actually start to identify um, uh, the different elements that is, exist within each one of those major themes. And, and we've listed them there, right? So the different activities that a, um, a farmer needs to go through. I've highlighted the ones in the ones that I've highlighted, the ones that I've put in bold. Uh, you can see the brackets at the end of it, and that's representing two things. The first thing is how much information there is, and it's low, medium, or high. And the second is how much uh, how much impact that has um, on 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 quality. Right. So in this particular case, if you look at the bottom here, we count fruitlets or count and yield estimate. They have low amount of information on the farm, but it has a high impact on their quality and decision making in the future. So where robotics kicks in to start with is all those areas where they're bold because they're the ones where the you know where, where we can easily gain some um, um, uh, get some runs with the with the farmer. Anything that's a low information for the farmer at the moment, they don't have enough information, but it has a high impact on their on their yield or on their quality, and that's what we target. And you can see there kind of the different elements: so quality, size, defects, and top level um, assessment of flowers, countlets, fruit yield assessment, etc. So this was a, about a decade ago and, you know, off the shelf Segway platform, but then we, we added a sensor suite on top, um, which had a, a large number of different sensors on board, um, as well as sensors in the ground. And our objective was to do in ground and above ground measurements and, and fuse that information together. So we get better estimates of what's going on uh, uh, in, the, in the field. We can then come along and, and as you know, you can kind of view the world in different ways and, and the robot sees the world in different ways and we apply machine learning techniques then based on the information to be able to fuse information, to understand whether or not there are some elements that are, um, are important for us to identify. Uh, we're dealing with very unstructured environments or even se just semi-structured environments. So being able to do things like localization of individual trees um, so that you can then identify fruit or flower according to that individual tree. And then you can uh, drive the platform up and down. So this is just a, um, a, 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 a um, if I can get this to run this video, sorry. Uh, this is just a, a, a video showing the, the, the uh, what was a video, sorry. Showing the robot going up and down the rows and um, uh, being able to collect information and identify individual trees and, 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 and um, uh, uh, signaling where those trees may be. So you can then start to do things more intelligently, like for example, in this case here, the robot going down, the little white box on the side there is going down the road, can identify individual trees, it can identify fruit on the tree, so now it's detecting apples in, in real time, and then we can target and, um, and spray those individual um, uh, fruit. And it's quite a hard problem. You can imagine the, the robots moving in roll and pitch, um, we, we're moving at a certain speed, we're identifying which of those we need to attack in real time and we're spraying it, for example, pesticide or whatever it might be. Uh, we also did some work on uh, uh, what it would be like to try and identify individual fruit uh, when you've got occlusion. So, you know, when a fruit covers a piece of fruit or when, or when leaves cover a fruit, then how can you identify? In this case here, what you're seeing is this uh, closed loop solution of information gain. So looking at Gaussian processes to try and identify shape. Um, and then based on the information content of the Gaussian, uh, what comes out of the Gaussian processes is to then position the robot visually in a certain way so that you can actually um, uh, get more information and be able to quantify a bit more uh, where that fruit may be and how much fruit there is. And that's important if we want to start doing like future harvesting. And this is just some early work that we 
uh, uh, so some recent work that we did um, on, on, on grasping using soft robotics, and I'll just jump through it quickly, but the whole idea was we just kind of took a robotic arm around, um, we looked at different soft robotic solutions and trying to look at um, how you might identify the fruit, uh, be able to grasp on the fruit and then and pull the fruit away without damaging the fruit. And that was one of the key things, or the tree. Um, they are important elements. So those are some recent uh, work, and there's still a lot more work to do. It's a, it's a hard problem, um, especially when you're dealing with soft fruit. If you're dealing with hard fruit like avocados or something, that's quite easy to skin stick. But when you're dealing with soft fruit, it's problematic. So looking at um, row crops and and same kind of process. You know, you speak to a farmer, you go through the process of understanding their processes, but you then also look at um, uh, the amount of information content um, that a farmer has, and then you try and identify those key things. Uh, we got enough funding that we could actually start to build our own robot now, and, and I'll talk a little bit about the dynamics and and the and the and the structure of this platform. Uh, with with vegetable farms, you you have a um, uh, you, it may look flat, but you, depending on the on the on the on the on the on the beds and the and where the wheels go on the troughs areas, you, you might get some undulation there and some rocks, and so the, the bot has to be flexible enough to deal with that, um, but not too flexible. Um, and you're dealing with trying to identify individual plants, so you want precision in uh, the uh, lever arm effects and the alignments of all the sensors. Uh, on the robot, despite all that undulation that goes through. And we could also start to look at solar electric. And so we started to look at energy efficient um, mechanisms. So the, the, the platform itself was this uh, solar electric platform that um, we could then uh, come along and, and change the, the height of the solar panels because of different size crops. Uh, but we could also change the width and, and the arch there also gave us some flexibility. So some um, flexibility in the bot so that when it was moving around on the beds, uh, we could actually um, uh, try and maintain some sort of level of stability of the sensors and then you could have this and you had this little arm that actually could bring the sensors closer and, and above and 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 also a robotic arm to be able to do manipulation on the crop we uh, the robot could fit onto the back of a trailer we added a number of different sensors on board so unlike tree crops now we're looking at vegetable crops which can be a little bit harder um, they're closer together um, uh, but also at the same time, there's some ease in that because you, you're looking down at the crop, you can deal with lighting conditions and, and, and things like that. Um, this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a, one of the early examples of the robot being able to go up and down the rows. Um, it finds the rows on its own, so it either uses GPS when it's when when things have been GPS laid out, but also we've got sensing systems that find the the rows and and, and can go up and down the rows. Uh, we, we got to the next phase of research where they wanted to then build an operational robot. So that was more of a research robot, an operational robot. So now Ripper, which was the next generation robot that we built, um, uh, was a lot more um, uh, capable um, in terms of its endurance. Uh, solar electric, uh, it was um, about 400 watts is what it was using, 400 to 600 watts. Uh, so it was a much more efficient than Ladybird. Um, and this was just a typical trial that we conducted where we looked at um, trying to get to 24 hours uh, as an operation. Uh, it got to about 23 or just under 23 hours, and, and but it just stayed in the middle of the, the field. And when the sun came up the next day, recharged and off it went again. So as you know, very similar to what you would expect in space missions, but now trying to put it into the context of um, a, a mission. And you can you can see also on this that some of the things that we had to deal with when it came to path planning and energy, the where the headlands are, so the area closer to you can get quite muddy because of the irrigation system. So you've got these changing energy patterns that happen through the farm, both in terms of how much sun you're getting, what the soil looks like, and that's all important as part of planning out and predicting in the, in the path planning out algorithms that you're developing. Uh, on the platform itself, you go all the way from sensing what you need to do with the registration of the information, machine learning classification, and then you've got various things like what are you going to do with the actuators to deal with the, the targets. So this could be if I'm weeding or if I'm spraying um, and being able to do everything from a, a moving platform, the coordinate transformations, even the scheduling, uh, scheduling sorry, of the, of the targets and what they look like. So this is a, an example of the bot in operation on a farm. Um, this is looking over lettuce. 
uh, and what you'll see is real-time machine learning systems, which is quite difficult. How do, you, how do you make a machine learning system run in real time on a computing platform that's not generally that strong uh, or that, or that you know, sorry, that powerful? Um, so this is detecting lettuce, uh, individual lettuce, um, and uh, being able to do volume estimation so that you can get yield estimates going through. Um, here, where if you can detect the crop, you can also detect the weed. So we looked at techniques of trying to remove weeds without chemicals. So this is using a little scraper um, that will scratch the weed off, which is enough to kill it. Um, but again, you're dealing with, you can see the terrain and you're trying to deal with motion on a platform running in real time and, and, and you want to be able to um, uh, 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 remove the weed uh, as it's going through. Here we're targeting individual plants with some um, spray. So this could be fertilizer, for example. Um, again, same problem, you're in motion, you need to be able to detect the plant and you need to be able to um, deal with it um, um, uh, while it's moving. And this is some water sampling. So being able to look at measuring water content below the soil. So again, you can see some similarities here about you know, what might future space missions look like, but what we're trying to do here is how do you bring all of it together, the real time uh, and operation and decision-making. Uh, in designing the bot, there are a few things you have to look at, um, you know, that we're dealing with uh, a system which has to straddle over the crops. Um, what does the uh, um, uh, what does the strain on the platform look like as it goes over rocks, undulating terrain beds, and how you might redesign it? We also had to look at airflow. So this is just looking at airflow under the robot. If you're if you're spraying, um, depending on which way the direction which direction the air wind is coming from, you've got issues there that you need to deal with. And so how do you how does a robot as it's moving sense the airflow and make decisions about where it needs to spray? in order to be able to target if it should spray, because there are certain conditions about spraying as well that you don't want to, um, um, uh, that you, you know, at certain times you can't spray. And so being able to bring in all that information together uh, is important. The uh, last robot solution I wanna talk about is a robot that we call Swagbot, which is which was all, was, was focusing on long endurance all terrain robotics. Um, our previous work focused on grazing, livestock, health and movement. Um, so again, focusing on ag and now our current work is looking at how we extend that into harsher terrain. So mining and space are two examples uh, that we're focusing on. Um, it has a pivot point in the middle that allows us to climb and clamber over rocks, but it's also an all wheel drive system and an all wheel steer system. So we can do some certain maneuvers and get out of tight situations. Um, and it's, it's an electric uh, platform. Uh, we can come along and we can put boundary zones, we can put no-go zones, and that allows us to build up path planning, very much like what you would see um, in, a, in, in a space mission. Uh, but we also looked at contours, and, and I'm not too familiar whether this happens, and I'm sure it does happen within space exploration missions, if not in research. Uh, for space exploration, but you know, looking at contours, looking at how much energy there is on the platform, and being able to then define what the most energy efficient path would be for the robot in order to navigate around a certain area. Um, so some of the work that we did when, um, uh, uh, so, so for example, we could do, uh, we could get about anywhere up to anywhere between 10 to 20% energy efficiency just by doing uh, uh, this process uh, for, the, for the platform. And <clears throat> Excuse me, and and part of it also is looking at the the um, uh, how the wheels are interacting with the terrain because uh, you can't just assume that if you went over that path today that it's going to be the same tomorrow. It rains overnight, it changes the terra mechanics, and then you've got to deal with uh, different conditions. So how you bring that? How do you bring in that new knowledge into the path planning solution uh, in real time? Uh, so some of the work that we did was on, on uh, how do you use this in, in agriculture uh, as an example and, and looking at collection of data and monitoring and removing weeds and, and things like that. So this is just an example of the robot uh, operating and, and trying to look at its different um, um, uh, dynamic uh, kinematics and, and dynamic solutions as you go through uh, different types of terrain. Uh, this is work that we had to look at where we were looking at the, the robot moving through an environment and doing real time weeding. And again, the machine learning system has to run in real time. You're making decisions about what's weed and what's not a weed. And then you're positioning and doing in very, very much visual surveying in this particular case uh, with the uh, robot being able to detect where the weed is and, and, and spraying the weed and, and localizing the weed under the center of the robot. As we, as we extended a little bit more, and this is less related to space, but just kind of showing you um, some of the activity. As we, as we extended a bit more, we started to notice that the animals, the, you know, in this case here, the cattle got used to the bot. And then we got to this approach where instead of herding animals, we could actually play a bit of a Pied Piper technique. So, the, so by putting a bit of hay on the back, we actually got the animals to move around. And so what you ended up doing was 
measuring pasture quality, identifying where the weeds are and moving the animals to, to certain parts of the terrain. And, and, and that became a mechanism by which you're, you're dealing with different elements of biology, biology of the animals, because you had to avoid them. There had to be collision avoidance on the path planning algorithms of moving objects. Uh, in this case, yeah, the, the cattle, which you know, can weigh up to 500 kilos and easily topple the bot, as well as the terrain that you had to deal with and moving uh, and being able to move around in that terrain. And while you're doing that, you're collecting information about um, the, the, the cattle as well. And you can start to look at the, the gating function of the animals and, and how they um, uh, how they're moving and whether in in you know one day over to another day are they you know are, is their walking function changing in which case that might indicate something about the health um, of the animal. So where's all this going? I, I think the 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 elements that I wanted to show you was 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 how we were building different types of robotic solutions, focusing on electric and solid electric, putting energy management tools, path planning tools for stability, um, as well as then trying to put in their machine learning systems that could operate in real time and then how you link the action and the decision space in, in real time. And, and we're getting better and better at the robotic solution being able to do that. Our, our next real research goal, so, so there's lots of practical work going on with the industry, but our next goal is just to kind of touch back on what I mentioned earlier on around how we might use different inferencing techniques to build cobots, to, to be able to build a robot that learns um, on the fly in the field, but is able to cooperate with an expert. And, and where do you separate information and knowledge between those two things and how those two things are, are, are come together is important. And we started to do that. So that some of the previous work that we did was around in, in space exploration. We moved that into the agriculture space, but we're coming back into it. So, so uh, into the space, uh, into aerospace. Uh, but, but what we're doing in agriculture is uh, you can kind of see here a little bit of that um, thinking process uh, we have a robot now. So, so a lot of the technology that I mentioned before has been spun out now into a, a startup out of the a, ACFR, out of the university. Um, and what we're looking at in that space is uh, in the bottom left hand there, you can kind of see uh, some uh, uh, just a, a schema, a representation of, of how plants grow, which generally grow in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, on a sigmoidal function. Um, and uh, we've done some work where you can actually measure the plant growth in the first three to four weeks. And, and once you get to about four to five weeks, you can actually predict quite well what the future growth pattern of that plant will look like. This is in the vegetable industry. And you can actually start to ask questions. So if it was under ideal conditions, not ideal conditions, what happens if I add a fertilizer, didn't add fertilizer, et cetera, what that future might look like. So we're bringing in the biophysical models that the ag scientists are very good at doing, the biophysical chemical models that the ag scientists are very good at doing, along with some data science and, and machine learning techniques. But what we want to do is couple that in with the expert knowledge. And, and that's some of the future work that we're, we're looking at um, within agriculture and touching upon that in terms of what it might look like within the, within the space uh, environment as well. So that's the end of the presentation. Uh, I thank you uh, for your time um, and, uh, and, and I'm hoping that was informative and, and um, uh, looking forward to any questions uh, uh, later. Thank you.